Welcome to the Servants of Grace podcast hosted by Dave Jenkins. Our podcast exists to provide trustworthy expository messages through the Bible and faithful answers to your theology questions. Now for today's episode, let's join our host, Dave Jenkins. Well, welcome back to the Servants of Grace Theology segment. My name is Dave, and I'm the host for this show. And on today's episode, a listener writes in, and they have a great question. And the question is this. Why are we told not to let the sun go down on our anger? Now, this is a really important question that we need to get right. Now, in Louisa May Alcott's Little Woman, Joe Marsh is, is known for her fiery temper. After Amy Burns' Joe's manuscript, Joe vows never to forgive her sister. However, Marmy, their mother, lovingly reminds Joe of a biblical truth. My dear, don't let the sun go down on your anger. Forgive each other, help each other, and begin again tomorrow. Later, Joe confesses how often her anger overwhelms her and even controls her. A heart filled with anger can cause suffering and great pain in our relationships with one another as Christians. In fact, in scripture, we read about the instruction and the warning to not let the sun go down on our anger in Ephesians 4.26. And although people are not sinning if they feel righteously anger, the problem is, is when they act on that emotion. Now, in Ephesians, the apostle Paul uses the figure of speech of the sun setting to show us how and why we need to deal with our anger. In the fourth chapter of Paul's epistle to Ephesians, he urges believers to live in unity and according to the new life they received from Christ in Ephesians 4, 1 through 3 and Ephesians 4, 22. Instead of living how they used to in their sin, the apostle encourages them to, in Ephesians 4.24, and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. The characteristic of a believer are different from those of a non-Christian. And now after mentioning the need to put on the new nature in Christ, Paul gives a list of behaviors that do not belong in the Christian life. Since they are new creations, believers should not lie to one another, but speak truthfully to one another, as Ephesians 4.25 says. They should not sin in their anger, steal, or use foul language, as it says in Ephesians 4.26-29. Believers should not grieve the Holy Spirit, as Paul says in Ephesians 4.30. Such things are bitterness, rage, and anger brawling and slander along with every form of malice have no place in the life of the Christ follower as Ephesians 4.31 says. In fact, in addition to listing behaviors and even attitudes that do not belong in the Christian life, Paul also gives positive commands. For instance, he tells them that they should use their hands to work and provide for themselves and others as well as use their words to build up others in Ephesians 4, 28 and 29. Christians should show compassion to others, forgive because they've been forgiven by Christ and imitate God in everything they do as it says in Ephesians 4, 32 and Ephesians 5, 1. There, therefore, Ephesians 4, 17 through 32 presents very important teaching about the Christian life. We do not follow these instructions because we want to gain favor with God. And Jesus says in John 14, 15, that we are to obey the commandments of the Lord. And we do so because of the grace of God and the indwelling help of the Holy Spirit. You see, as Christians, we want to act lovingly. We want to act compassionately. We want to forgive and be helpful because we've been born again and our new creations in Christ, as 2 Corinthians 5.17 says. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we can put off the deeds of the old self and follow Jesus in all of life. Now, in the context of the instructions that we're talking about here, Paul discusses anger. As the apostle told the Ephesians in Ephesians 4.26, In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. Many people have misinterpreted this verse because some translations, such as the King James Version, say, Be ye angry and sin not. The first part of Ephesians 4.26 is a quote from Psalm 4.4. And Paul is not encouraging people to be angry. In fact, the Bible says not to sin because of uncontrolled anger. As author and Bible teacher Jerry Bridges explains in his book, The Fruitful Life, to have a temper that requires self-control is not a mark of ungodliness. To fail to control it is. We will feel angry at times, but we should not let this emotion control us. In fact, in instructing Christians not to allow the sun to go down on their anger, Paul uses this figure of speech to show us that we need to deal with our anger appropriately and even biblically. 
Scripture is warning us against the danger of lasting anger, which leads to negative consequences. When we allow anger to grow in our hearts, we become bitter, we become hateful, we even become unforgiving. And as a result, this hinders our relationship with God and with other people. In fact, directly after the instructions on anger, Paul adds, do not give the devil a foothold in Ephesians 4.27. That is to say, dwelling on anger for an extended period of time, it gives the devil an opportunity to tempt us into sin. That is to say, isn't to say that, that we give Satan, as it's been said, legal rights into our life. That's an impossibility. We are indwelt by the Spirit. We are sealed by the Spirit. We are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, and Christ alone. To teach the legal rights view is to undermine the grace of God and the sufficiency of Christ and the revelation of God's entire word. Now, Satan, though, he does want to magnify our anger so that we will act on the emotion that will sin against the Lord and that'll hurt other people. When we talk about this, we're talking about our fellowship with God being impacted, not our security with God being impacted. And, And when our temper leads us to sin, we need to confess our sin and seek forgiveness first from the Lord and then from one another. Scripture reminds us in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Also, if others were negatively affected by our anger, we should quickly seek their forgiveness. Paul's instructions to not let the sun go down on our anger involves promptly dealing with anger as well as the sin caused by our anger. Now, the Lord would command us to be angry at times is understandable when we consider biblical ethics. In the same letter, Paul summarizes what we need to know about Christian virtues by telling us in Ephesians 5, 1, be imitators of God. That is to say, our Father in heaven can only be perfectly holy if he gets angry when his righteous standards are violated, as we see in Deuteronomy 32, 4 and Isaiah 6, 3. If we are to imitate him, we too must get mad at those things that get God angry. We must grow incensed when we see the weak and the helpless exploited because the Lord's wrath is kindled against the oppressor, as we see in Exodus 22, 21 through 24. In fact, hypocrisy in our lives and in the church must disturb us because of Jesus' anger at those who honor him with their lips only, as we see in Matthew 15, 8 and Matthew 15, 23. And yet we must also acknowledge we are imperfect. And while we must sometimes get angry, righteously angry, we must also take care that we do not sin in our anger as we're considering from Ephesians 4, 26. In fact, we must say every time we're mad, we should check ourselves to see if we're upset at the things God hates. Otherwise, we may be angry without just cause and give an opportunity to the devil, as we see in Ephesians 4.27. Anger is the emotion most prone to sinful abuse, and this is why Paul also tells us to put away anger in Ephesians 4.31. This is not a contradiction of Ephesians 4.26. Paul is only recognizing that our anger, even if it is godly at first, is too often perverted into feelings of malice instead of a longing to see offenders repent. When this happens, we are in danger of giving root to the bitterness that destroys, as Hebrews 12.15 says. Now, finally, though evil should anger us, we're not always to put poor wrath on others. Jesus uh, got on the case of the Pharisees because of their hard hearts in Matthew 23, but he was kind and gentle to the adulterous woman because she was humble and contrite in John 7, 53 through 8, 11. We cannot condone sin, but we must also imitate our Lord and Savior and seek to restore the repentant in lieu of showing the full uh, brunt of our wrath. We can too easily fall back into the sway of sin, which makes our hearts deceitful behind all things, as Jeremiah 17, 9 says. We can even trick ourselves into thinking that our anger is godly when it's not pleasing to the Lord. Being honest with other Christians is essential in differentiating between godly and ungodly anger. If you're mad today, confess your ungodly anger to a godly friend who can help you discern whether it is justified. Then seek the good of the person with whom you're angry. 
She, to properly deal with a short temper, we must practice and even cultivate self-control. After all, Scripture tells us that self-control is a fruit of the Spirit, a result of the Holy Spirit's work in our life in Ephesians 5, 22-23. The Spirit will produce spiritual fruit that is evident in the way that we live. And although this work is His, we can do our part by walking in the Spirit, which includes listening and even yielding to His guidance and obeying His Word, as Galatians 5, 16 says. A helpful way to practice self-control when we're angry is to remind ourselves of the Word of God. By memorizing and even meditating on passages that deal with anger, such as Ephesians 4, 26-27, we store God's Word in our heart, which the Holy Spirit can then use as a guide, as we see in Psalm 119, 11. Now, remembering verses such as, For the anger of men does not produce the righteousness of God, redirects us when we feel angry, as James 1.20 tells us. And other important verses about anger include Psalm 103.8, Proverbs 14.29, Proverbs 15.1, Ecclesiastes 7.9, 1 Corinthians 13.4-5, Colossians 3.8, and James 1.19. In fact, we might even consider removing ourselves from the immediate situation and praying to God and because this can also help us control our anger. If a conversation becomes heated or somebody is doing something that angers us, we can step away and talk to God about how we feel. You see, the Lord cares about us and he invites us to come before him in 1 Peter 5, 7 and trust the situation to the Lord and ask him for self-control. Although we're still going to stumble at times and struggle with our temper, we must seek his help with anger in all these types of situations. Well, I want to thank you for listening or watching this episode of the Servants of Grace Theology segment. Until next time, may the Lord richly bless you and keep you. Thank you for listening to the Servants of Grace podcast today. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe, leave a rating on the app, and share our episode with your friends and family. If you'd like to, you can follow us on Instagram at Servants of Grace, on Twitter at Servants of Grace, or by searching Servants of Grace on Facebook. You can also find this podcast on the front page of our website at servantsofgrace.org.